Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And our topic for this week is about lettering and about getting good success when you change the size of the text. And so um, if you're ready to get started, then what we can do is just pop on over to my software. And today I'm going to use the Floriani Fusion software to demonstrate. Uh, but what I'm going to show you will be the same if you use any Floriani software with lettering, whether it be FTCU or Lettering Master, um, Total Quilter, you know, Fusion, all these programs have text tools. And so um, essentially to get started, I need to click on the text tool and create, you know, a segment of embroidery text. And when you make a, that um, segment, what's going to be important to, I guess, getting a good result is the size. And as you change the size, you may need to, you know, enhance the settings to make it really successful. And so um, let's just start out by clicking on the text to select it and notice the properties box and how the properties box is really where you take control of the text. And so I can make it say Trevor if I want to and, you know, click apply. So this is the idea that, you know, you control the text by the properties box and we probably have all changed the size and the, you know, font of our text. And there's lots of fonts to choose from. And um, when you hover over the image above here, it kind of shows you what your font looks like. And it also tells you information like what characters are included, you know, upper, lower case, punctuation. <clears throat> that that box only stays open so long. And I know you can kind of hover over it again to make it pop up again. But if you want it to open so you can look at it for a little minute, there's a question mark right beside the font selector. And when you click on that question mark, it opens up the same information in a window that will stay open until you close it later. And so you can kind of study you know, what symbols and characters are available, but more importantly might be what's the size suggested size range. And it works in, or it's suggested in both inches and in metric. So this font should be good from 0.39 of an inch or 10 millimeters up to as large as three inches or 76 millimeters. And so that's helpful information right now. <clears throat> if I look at my properties box, it says this is 20 millimeter text. Um, unless you are right click on your ruler on the ruler space and change that to inches, in which case, you know, everything in here will talk to you in inches. And so in inches, it's 0.79 of an inch. And so, um, the, but what's really important when it comes down to getting sort of success is the way the stitching is made. And the software decides that um, if I zoom in really closely and I, you can see that I have my needle points turned on and the 3D is turned off, right? Because that's what it looks like with 3D turned off. Then I turn off the needle points. But if I turn off the 3D and turn on the needle points, you can see a little bit more clearly exactly where the needle is going to go. And what you can see here is that this is a satin column. So the needle points are just on the outer edges and that it has um, a little bit of underlying stitches. And this is probably called a parallel underlay. And if you click on your text, that information would be found in your properties box, but it won't be on the T where you change your text or your font. It'll be on the purple star where you choose the style of stitching, satin fill, and the density, you know, 0.4, which is how far apart are the rows of the stitches. And you can control these things. If you want to control the underlay, then you go to the little yellow kind of square beside that where you have different choices. And parallel is the first choice and the default choice, but you could add to that a contour, you know. Um, click apply and now you can see the stitching going around the outer edges like that <clears throat> there's also center line and zigzag as the other options parallel is kind of like half of the zigzag so if i change notice how it's kind of like one or the other so if i click on zigzag now i'm going to have the contour that's the one that goes around the outside and the zigzag and so 
these are choices that you can make. And the way I make them is based upon how wide is this column. And so when we get to our smallest sizes, and remember the size was set over here in the text tab where it said 0.79 of an inch. Well, it said it could go as small as, you know, 0.39 or something, you know, let's try 0.4 of an inch. So at 0.4 of an inch, how wide is this column? And you'll notice right away that it doesn't look the same. I don't notice the contour and the zigzag that we had turned on. But in reality, contour plus zigzag would probably be too much underlay for this small little sort of column width that it's got, you know, the size. So what I'm telling you is the, the width of the columns, how you determine how to properly stabilize it and how to properly support it. And in this case, the answer would be maybe just to go back to a parallel only and click apply. And so it'll put just a little bit less stitching underneath, you know, as needed. So at your smallest of sizes, the parallel is the appropriate choice. So when you're doing, you know, half inch text and that kind of thing, that's probably what you're going to choose. But as it gets bigger and, you know, and you could take this up to any size that you want, but now really the question is not how tall is it to me is it's how wide is the column so when you measure the column oh it's 0.1 of an inch now you know and if you're like me and you're in canada eh? then you want to do it in metric so i'll measure that in metric and it's two and a half millimeters wide so when you get to that kind of size then you could start to look at adding in a contour underlay and i might leave a parallel plus a contour so the contour will go around the outside and the parallel will kind of boost the inside. So, you know, that's when the lettering is at, um, and we'll go back to inches here, 0.6 of an inch. Um, but as you make it bigger and maybe now it's like I'm at, you know, not even quite one inch tall yet, that's a one inch tall letters. Now I think the column width itself is becoming wider. And so if you measure it, it's more like 0.15 of an inch. And so here you get to that point where a contour is still a good idea and the parallel is great, but you might even want to take it to the next level and add it to that zigzag. And there are no hard and fast numbers here. The concept is the bigger the column, the more support you'd like to give it. These underlying, the underlay stitches are important stitches. They help the um, stitching sit up on top. They give it loft and um, kind of help it look more clean. And so now this, this font said that it would be good for like up to three inches tall. Well, the, the thing to watch out for here is when I make it really tall. So if I go up and now it's like one and a half inches tall. You know, now it's like two inches tall. And I'm just reading that there's a, um, let's turn on 3D for a minute. Um, so everything looks good so far, right? And that's kind of the key indicator is, does it look good when you turn on 3D in terms of getting bigger? Um, what I'm saying is when I resize it, uh, there's a little box at the bottom that kind of tells me how big I'm going as I go. And so now I'm over two inches and I'm like two and a half inches. And I notice right away, there's something weird going on with the bottom of the letter V. And from here, the bigger I get, the worse this is going to happen. Um, so really the, the limitation here is my column widths, now you're getting, you know, now it's crazy, right? Now we're three and a half inches tall. And this is where the limit of the font becomes is um, when you get too big. And so what that's about is the column width has a physical limit, like that the software doesn't want to make beyond because it won't sew well on your embroidery machine. And it represents it by showing it as a gap. So as I get into this three, oh, you know, two and a half to three inch range, I start to have areas where the stitches show as missing. Look, it's here in this corner. It's here at the bottom of there. And really the reason, if I turn off 3D, they're not missing, but there's they're, they're, the software's trying to cue us that they're too long to be a satin stitch. 
And so it shows it like they're missing. And the result, the answer to that is actually to change the style of stitching. So that's in your properties box as well. It's on the purple star where we could change things like the density. Well, if we change it from a satin to a pattern fill, and there are several different patterns to choose from, but they're different sort of smooth textured patterns. But now you can sew this text at any size you want because instead of just having the satin fill with the stitches on the outer edges, the software puts stitches across the middle. And so you can go even beyond the regular size descriptions in the software if you understand a little bit more about the settings. And so really coming down to it now when you're looking at it, <clears throat> the underlay needs to be the suitable amount of underlay for a large area of fill stitch. And um, when you come here in the properties box for underlay, the choices are things like contour and zigzag. Well, I can't really add any more. Um, I could add more by changing the, the numerical settings like for how close the zigzags are. But sometimes when we do large areas of fills, we might do them with the other kinds of underlay, like the perpendicular or the lattice. And um, the reason those ones are limited right now is because this is a text segment, you know, and we've made text. And when you make text with the text tool, the benefit is you can come into the text tabs and type in, you know, a different word in here, right? Or type in a different font and change the letter style. And so it becomes very sort of fluid what you can do with it. But if you want to be able to take control of things like the style of underlay or other things, it is possible to do what's called break apart the text. And when I break apart the text, the one thing to know is I will no longer have the same capabilities. It will no longer be a text segment where I could come in and, you know, for example, choose edit text and use the little handles to adjust the letter spacing. When I get, so if what I'm saying is if you want to use your text in a different way, you can right click when you select it and you choose break up text. And when you do that, You'll no longer have a text segment, but what you will have is a segment for an F and a segment for an L. Of course, the software won't know their Fs and Ls. They'll just know that they are shapes. But the difference there is now you can select that shape and you can control um, the underlay in different ways. You have different options. Now you could choose the perpendicular style of underlay. Um, and so it does change things a little bit, being able to break apart the text. But I think um, the opposite sometimes can also happen. So when you're going big, sometimes you want to break apart your text. But when you're going small, so I'll start a new text segment. And so it starts out with the default size. So here it is at 0.79 of an inch. This is the Andrew letter style. And it says, if I click on the little question marks, that it's kind of 0.4 of an inch is the minimum. So if I turn it into 0.4 and click apply, this is at the smaller end. Well, at the smaller end, clearly there's not room for multiple layers of underlay. And really just a center line or a parallel would be the kind of bare minimum, you know? So you can try center, or parallel as your kind of minimum amounts. But what really determines how small you can go is once again, the width of the column. And so if you measure it, and I'll take my ruler, sorry, and measure across this column, and now I'm at 0 0.04 of an inch. If I was to measure that in metric, because it's a little bit easier for me with the small numbers, it's less than one millimeter wide. Well, I can tell you that that's getting to be too skinny to look good. And so this is the bare minimum the software is suggesting as 0.4. Um, the text looks like it has room to go smaller, but the column width doesn't, you know, and that's really the point of it. Now you can increase the column width here in your properties box. It's not the fill tab. It's not the underlay tab. It's the push and pull tab. 
And on the push and pull tab, you have the ability to add pull compensation, which basically fattens it up. You can either go by percentage or absolute. So if you choose absolute, you get to type the exact amount that you want. Um, if this is only a millimeter wide, I can tell you that a millimeter and a half would be much better. And really 1.2, 1.3 is kind of the, the minimum column that looks nice. And so if I came in here and added 0.2 on both sides, that would be like adding 0.4 which is like adding half a millimeter, right? So it'll it'll go from being kind of like just about a millimeter to a little bit fatter than a millimeter, you know, almost a millimeter and a half. And that will really increase your success for your little letters. Um, it's not wrong to add a little bit of pull compensation on all of your letters at any size, but especially when the columns are becoming small and if you're finding that the column's really skinny and the underlay doesn't get properly covered by the column, that's a good indication you need more pull compensation. And so really a general understanding of why all of these settings exist and how we adjust them based upon what embroidery we're creating. And what really matters to me is not how tall are the letters, but how big is the column that you're making. So I don't know if that was interesting, but it's a little bit of information about the kind of basics of embroidery and choosing the different styles of uh, stitching and then choosing the different styles of underlay and therefore, um, you know, improving the success of your embroidery. So I hope you enjoyed this week's RNK Software Club's video of the week. Until next week, have a great day and bye for now.